All right. Welcome back to the African Beat on the Voice of America. And uh, today I have uh, a very young and enterprising Sierra Leonean journalist. That is uh, Precious Amabel Lebby. And uh, she is the host of uh, Moment with Precious. Welcome to the African Beat, Precious. Thank you very much, David Vandy. Well, it's it's so good to have you here in the United States and on the Voice of America on my show, The African Beat. I believe when you're back home in Sierra Leone, you sometimes listen to my show, right? Always. So tell and me it's about it. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back home, we look at you as an icon and the African Beat as a whole. And so... Um, we, well, not just me, but young people are looking so much up to the African beats because it's like a face of our country. And so I have been listening and more especially that you are focusing on music entertainment industry and so it's a pleasure for me to be here today and to be hosted by the renowned david vandy of the African all right Bits. okay don't blow my head out don't blow my head out okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody's talking about your online talk show that is um moment with precious i know you were you were on television with other radio stations, on television stations, like uh, you were with Star TV, right? Yes, please. Uh, okay, and, uh, but how did this moment of precious come about? When did it actually dawn on you that, hey, I have to start something. I have to talk about important issues. I have to talk about issues that maybe the radio and the television don't talk about. I went into journalism because I wanted to be the change that I seek. And... I started off with Star Radio and Television and everything was going well until we had the elections. Then we heard various media houses had their own rules and regulation, what they want to put out their content. And so I was there doing my best, but I believed that my best wasn't enough. I wanted to do something different from the status quo, from what every other person was saying was viewing. So I then decided that now I have a Facebook and now Facebook have a live stream. Why not do the news as and when it happens on the ground live without you going to the studio to edit it, to turn it to what you want, to your own convenience and all. Why not put it to the people? Let them see the reality and make the decision. And I believe Moments with Precious was timely because it was that time in our country where we had a transition. You know, we we're going into elections and all. And so people in the diaspora didn't know what was going on. There were informations like they have been killing today, this thing when there are a whole lot of different stories to one particular incident. So I started off with Moments with Precious and I had only 28 likes, uh, viewers. So, but I didn't think much about the viewers. I wanted to create that change. So I started going to marketplaces, ask them how they feel about government, how they feel about things that are going on, who uh, and what they think about the elections coming up. So it became interesting. And then in the diaspora, we had people like, oh, Precious, you're doing well. That was all I needed, the motivation that the program is a necessity. So you were actually going on the spot as the things are happening. You report right on the spot where it's happening, how it's happening, and when it's happening. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, uh, because normally we would say if, like you said, when by, by the time it's reached the studio and by the time it's going to be get ready to be put out, something might have changed. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that, that kind of change. You want the people to see it first time and make... And they be the judge. Exactly. All right. This is the African Beat on the Voice of America. And my guest is Precious, Precious Amabel Levy. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Precious, let, you know, there, were, there was a time when there was a little boy, a baby that was sick called Baby Mustafa. And uh, Baby Mustafa was so sick that he needed a kidney transplant. And uh, that could not be done in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Mustafa had to be flown out of the country. But you played a very major role in getting like the first lady to be involved, uh, doing putting it on your social media. You know, tell me about 
baby Mustafa and uh, some of the things that you did that we don't even know about? Authenticity is key. People in society should believe in you and the words that you say and the things that you do. Baby Mustafa's issue had been going on since November the previous year, last year. And the mom met me and explained to me that this was the problem. And I saw the baby. I couldn't stop crying. By that time, I was the press attaché for the Sierra Leone People's Party, now the, um, the ruling, ruling party. party in Sierra Leone. And I met the first lady during their campaign period. I told her that, Madam Fatima, we have this case. Then she said, Precious, now we're busy in the province and all. Can you wait after election? She gave me her word. I said, okay. Fast forward after elections, I was covering for the president and all voluntarily. And then and my uh, colleague... Your covering was voluntary. It you was were voluntary. not being paid. No, 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 no. And up to now, you're not being paid. No, I'm not being paid. <laughs> it was voluntary. I, I, I did it. What a patriot, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. And so... After that, then my colleague, who is an, a humanitarian also, Alfred Charles Morgan, met me and said, Precious, uh, I, I've been trying to reach the First Lady. I've not been able to. We have baby Mustafa's situation and he has only two weeks to do this. I was then at Star Radio and Television, so I can remember I'll call the, the mom to come to me at the office with um, Reverend Matachi Goze. We will sit, we will brainstorm what to do, fundraising to do and all. But it wasn't yielding much dividend and time was of the essence. So then one day I told um, my colleague, Charles, I said, Charles, let's go to the first lady. He said, did you make an appointment? I said, no. I just believe we'll make up a story, but we need to see the first lady because she's the only one that will listen to us right now and will help us out. And hold on, Bio, I went there, met the security guards and all, but they knew me because I have been doing coverages when it was heated and people were thinking that they were going to capture me and all, but I remained steadfast. So they were like, do you have an appointment? I said, yes, she's waiting for me. And so... They said, okay, can you call up there? And or I tried calling to no avail. Then I said, okay, you can go, but only you can go up there and not the other guy because we know you. You have been doing work for, you know, the country and all. And so eventually you were able to meet with her. Yes. Mm -hmm. I met with her and the first thing she said was that, Precious, why did it take so long? Why didn't you remind me? I said, because I was doing a whole lot. So I asked only for two minutes of a time to do a video as Charles has already requested. I said, we only need two minutes. She said, Precious, tomorrow come with your cameraman and all. Let's do this. She did it. It went viral. We needed $36,000 for baby Mustafa. For the past eight months or so, we've, we've only just $7,000 we have been able to. Within 24 hours, we raised over $36,000 for baby Mustafa, who had Bilari Atresia. And immediately, we sent him off to India, where now he's back in Sierra Leone. Hail baby Abhati. Mustafa is back? Yes, Oh, he is. my goodness. He's back in Sierra Leone. <laughs> well, congratulations. You see... Like you said, integrity as a journalist all counts because these days um, we know that sometimes that we have people who, in as much as you say you are president attaché for ruling party, but you have your integrity to keep. Yes. And so you report the things as they happen. Indeed. You're not saying because, okay, um, with these people, I will not tell the truth about what they're doing. Yes, that is what makes you a good journalist and you bring all sides of the story on board. Indeed. Well, that is so great. And uh, you have been... Uh, you are here in the United States, and you were here for the Mandela um, Fellowship Foundation, right? Yes. So, how did it go, and uh, how did you get on board? The same work that I do. The same work that you do? Yes. Uh -huh. And I applied. Okay. I just went in. They were looking for people that do not only have a dream, but working towards a dream. And then I was going on doing my little bits. And so I applied, went for the interview. It was rigorous. And I forgot about it, continued doing what I was doing. Then I was called that I was successful. Coming to America, I wanted to be the change, to put Sierra Leone up there, not just to be the regular um, um, alumni of Mandela Washington Fellow. I have a dream that one day 
Africa will be changed and not only be changed, but by the youths of Africa. So I got selected, came here, I was at the University of Wisconsin on the public management. I was the only Sierra Leonean in my university. Hmm. I didn't stop talking. My voice, I wanted my voice to be heard. And so my colleagues knew me. We will bring up debate. I will do moments with pressures. Let's talk about what we've learned the previous week and all. So that was it. So we got to D.C. We had the summit. Then they called me that I should chair a panel from policymakers from the White House, from across Africa, he for she campaigners. The first question I asked was, why me? But then I remember that I didn't let my voice limit me. I wanted people to hear my voice, hear my story, and know that we have beautiful stories in Africa and Sierra Leone, to be precise. And my campaign has always been for women and girls to be empowered. So I was very much delighted to be on the platform. So I cheered it and it went on well. And I must tell you, uh, David, it has been from one blessing to another with the State Department and going to Sierra Leone, um, I'm going charged up. I was, I was just... <laughs> To that say so you now you are getting ready to go back and and thank you so much for giving me time on the show to talk to you now you're getting ready to go back what are you going to take back to Sierra Leone how are you, what kind of message are you going to take to a country that is now as we can say so divided but yeah, along partisan lines and uh, political lines you name it regional lines everything so somebody like you that has been out here and thinking about empowering women, girls, uh, young children, and you've learned so, so much within this short time. What are you going to take back? I am going to take back the fact that the destiny of Africa lies on the shoulders of women and girls in Africa. And it must start from Sierra Leone. And so all that have been embedded in me, I'm going to unleash it through different platforms, training, radio programs, you name it, so that the voices of women and girls will be heard and our concerns will be met far and wide. And finally, Precious, when you go back with all this experience, with all what you've learned, are you going to go back to one of the radio or television stations or are you going to continue your momentary pressures on social media and so forth? You don't want to talk about that? <laughs> no. One thing I'll tell you, I'm not going back to the radio or television stations, meaning working for any of them, but Moments with Precious is coming with something big. With something so big. just watch out. Something big, something different. Something different. All from right. The well, once again, I want to thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you here. And I look forward to whatever big is going to come out of what you've gained here that you're going to take back home to Sierra Leone. And I wish you all the best in your work and just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you are young and you have these big dreams and it's for our country. And, and I tell you, wherever we go, we are a representation of where we come from. Indeed. We are ambassadors of where we come from. Yeah. You know, people have various ways of, of looking at Africa and have various ways of, of looking at the country that we come from. But it's up to you that are out there. You don't need to be officially appointed. Yes. But the fact that you are out here, you are a representation. I call myself an ambassador of my country. Yes. Nobody needs to appoint me. Mm -hmm. But here at The Voice of America, my voice is the voice of Africa. It is the voice of Sierra Leone. Yeah. So I stand tall and I stand proud. Yeah. And I want you to do the same. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I wish you a safe journey back home. And I'll be looking forward to all the social media big deals that are coming out. All right. All right? Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Well, that's my guest today. And that is Precious Amabel Lebby, a journalist from Sierra Leone, the host and producer of the online uh, talk show, uh, streaming talk show, uh, Moments with Precious from Sierra Leone, who has been here in the United States and uh, attending the, the Mandela Fellowship. But now she's going back and I want to wish her all the best. All right. Stay tuned to the Voice of America, and I'm David Vandy. This is the African Beat.